Hello everyone, happy Friday. Thank you so much for coming in tonight and thank you replay viewers for watching and thank you catch viewers for being here as well. Catch viewers, if you wanna watch me live and interact, uh, feel free to download the Periscope app and search for Penguin and Fish and click follow. I'm here every night at 9.30. I invite you to be here too. Thanks guys. All right, I'm gonna flip you around. Hello, thank you for coming in everyone. It's nice to see you on a Friday evening. Hey there all. How is it going? Friday evening. I'm chilling and crafting. It's it's uh it's my type of Friday evening. Uh the husband's out hanging out with uh friends and I'm here crafting with you guys and that's perfect. That's a great Friday. If only we had wine. We have to hit the hit the store. Uh we are, we have nothing in the house right now. It's a sad, sad Friday from that standpoint. But hey guys, thanks for coming in. We are gonna continue with the checkerboard pattern by Bat Pat Sloan. Uh, it's block number 12 of the Splendid Sampler Mystery Quilt Along. Uh, oh, you'll drink some for me, thank you. <laughs> Oh, you got your checkerboard done. If you guys don't know what the Splendid Sampler is, go check out thesplendidsampler.com. It's a year-round uh, quilt along. It started in February. We're only on block 12. There's 100 in all, so there's plenty of time to catch up for sure. Uh, it's a mystery block, so we get new blocks every Thursday and Sunday. So Sunday's coming up, new block, but we got to finish this one first, right? And I didn't, I, we were still working on the block before this too, which was my block. I was block number 11, uh, the crocheted thoughts with the little doily in there. So that one's not done yet. <laughs> we got to finish this one first. Uh, so we are going to try the whole twisted seam thing, but I've never done that before. So I don't know. Uh, we'll see how that goes. Uh, it'll be, it'll be interesting. I know some of you guys have done it before, so you guys can help me out if I mess up. All right, if you are new here, uh, my name is Alyssa Thomas from Penguin and Fish, where we create lovely and quirky hand embroidery patterns and kits. I am the author of Sew and Stitch Embroidery, and, uh, uh, sorry guys, and uh, the uh, author of Sew and Stitch Embroidery, I'm a fabric designer as well. What did I do to your blog? Oh, <laughs> so guys, uh, I'm going to flip you around and we will get started. It looks like we have a couple trolls here and there. I blocked one guy, so we'll see how that goes. I'm done with block 12, but it'll be a while before I finish uh, block 11. I am there, right there with you. So, um, yes, let's flip around, guys, and we'll get going. Oop. There we go. Okay, here we are. Okay, so I, I managed to lay it out the same <laughs> as how we had it last night. I put it away, I put it in a sleeve, um, and uh, managed to keep track of it. <laughs> I had it all lined up in the sleeve, and uh, it didn't fall out on me, so that was good. So the next part on this is sewing them into little four patches. So that's what we're going to do now. Uh, the trick is, so like here's a four patch, the trick is I'm going to have to keep track of what I'm doing, okay? So I'm gonna go in order. I'm gonna go one, two, three, and then four, five, six, and then seven, eight, nine will be these bottom three. So I'll have them all in one long string uh, from sewing them together. And then I just have to make sure that when I snip them, I put them back in order right away. <laughs> Otherwise, we're gonna be totally messed up and I'll be sad. I did take a photo of it though last night before I put it away so I could always break out the the phone and uh, see see if we do it right. Okay, so let's just get right into sewing. We've done, um, I'm gonna do, I'm gonna fold over the top to the bottom just so I can remember, so I can be consistent. But we pressed the seams in different directions, so we're gonna be able to nest them together. And nesting them, let's see if I can get this in focus here. There we go. So nesting them is just when the seams are a different direction. You can see this one's pointed uh, to the right and uh, this one's to the left uh then oh yes the photo is a must i know just to keep track so nesting them is kind of just when you bump them together like that and then once they're bumped together 
you can sew and that will make like a nice point. Uh, the points will be like really lined up supposedly really well. So this is what I'm used to doing. And this is a step, instead of pressing them open, so this is the first step of doing that whole twisted seams thing. So that is what where we're gonna start. So top to bottom. All right, I'm gonna move over to the sewing machine. You, which is not that far. <laughs> there we go. Okay, so let's do it, guys. I'm gonna tilt you up just a hair so I can read still. I have the stand a little higher tonight uh, so you can see the whole piece together. I got my seam ripper just in case I need it. And I got this super pretty stiletto from Diane. Uh, I don't know if she, she pops in, uh, she might be here tonight. But I love it so much. Look, at it matches. Ooh, it totally is, goes with my nails tonight. But it matches my collection, uh, or my, my quilt, uh, because I'm doing a lot of blues in my quilt. Can't stay. Love how creative you are. Oh, thanks, LaShonda. I really appreciate it. Catch the replay. Awesome. Thanks. Uh, thanks for popping in. All right. So I'm going to go in order, like I said, from top, the top row and middle row, bottom row. So, And I'm folding my top one to the bottom one just so I can keep track of that. Then I'll be putting them in the machine all at the same angle or same direction uh, and then I think I will um, be able to keep track of all this all right so again we'll attempt this quarter scant quarter inch I do think that starching has helped and again I'm not using that real starch I'm using um, that soak uh, flatter wash and I think uh, I think that's working just fine it, it feels like it's starchier or like um, what does starch do? It makes it like stiff. It make, it's stiffer than I think it usually is. So that's that's good. We'll see how it goes once I have some units sewn together. You know what? I should probably test the first one, don't you think? I'm gonna I'm gonna just sew one unit. I was gonna stitch them all in a row, but I think I'm gonna do just this one unit and check my measurements first to see if my quarter inch is good, and then I will. Oh, thing! Oh, there you are, Diane. Yeah, it's her stiletto right there. Isn't it pretty? It's so fun. I love it. So I'm going to test this first one. And then if this one's size decent, uh, I will do all the rest of them. I'll try and get them in the exact same place. Because I'm trying to be more accurate, guys. Because that is, um, that's the thing I need to work on for sure in, uh, in quilting. I've discovered from doing the, the splendid samplers. Oh, see, now look. That's what happens when you nest the seams together. You get like perfect little point there. Oh gosh, I love, you know, I love sewing things together because even though they're laid out together here, it looks so different when you, um, when they're all together. I don't know, it's like transformative. Why do you have the piece going back under your needle? Oh, we've, um, this is, uh, I think you guys, some, some people here told me about this. It's a starter and an ender. What it does is it's basically, first of all, it helps to make it so the your fabric doesn't start pushing down into the machine, and it makes the uh, when you when you start, the thickness is the same as what you're stitching, so uh, it helps bridge the gap between your stitches. And and I don't know. I believe it, <laughs> so I'm doing it. I, I never really did it before. My mom always did, but I never got it. But uh, the way that you guys explained it, where it, it like bridges, um, it it keeps it the same level, the presser foot, that made sense, and it has to make sense for me to, for me to do it, so. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna press this. We're gonna try to do that twisted seam with this, and I'm gonna press it uh, to see if we measure the right Oh, call it a leader. Oh, it leads the fabric. Okay, there we go. That's what, okay, we call it a leader. See, I don't know all the terms. <laughs> you know, I and I do kind of mix up my words a lot. Like when I was little, I called uh, Sloppy Joe's Messy Sam's, like on accident, because my brain just kind of switches weird like that. So I've been calling it a, like a starter and an ender instead of like a leader. All right, so I'm going to... Uh, Let's see now. Now we got to figure out this whole twisty thing. So okay, I read a little bit about this again before we went on tonight. I think I just kind of open them up. <laughs> yeah, and forever they will be messy, Sam's. Yeah, exactly. So let's see. I think I kind of just 
loosen the middle. Yeah, so the middle's kind of coming apart because I didn't I didn't backstitch. I just uh, left it, and I think I just pull the seam allowances to where they want to go, and it just kind of opens. So there's our twisted seam already right there. Oh, that is cute, people. <laughs> so I think uh, that's kind of weird, though. I, I would think that it would keep unraveling, and then we'd have a hole right in the middle there. So I don't know. It's kind of odd. But I don't know. I suppose it works. Uh, all right, so now we press that. Ah, it's so cute. All right, that wasn't that hard, guys. That was easy, super duper easy. All right, let's just press these all the ways that it wants to be pressed again. Uh, it's nice because we've already pressed in the different directions, so it just kind of gets to stay where it wants to be. So that's kind of nice. Oh, it's so sweet. Look at the little itty bitties. All right, let's just get the front again. I gotta remember which way is up and down now, which that, that might be a little bit of a challenge. All right. Yeah, that's pretty flat, I think. Let's just get these seams really good. I wanna get this uh, as flat as I can because I wanna measure this to make sure uh, where we're on track. Because again, I need to work on my accuracy. I'm trying to learn things by doing the splendid sampler here. Oh, that is a sweet looking point, people. All right, I'm gonna scooch over a hair because I don't wanna disturb. Well, you know what, I don't know. I think I'm gonna have to do it over here on this little piece of piece of mat board here. All right, so this should be, let's see, what should this be? It should be two and a half by two and a half at this point, right? Yeah, because it's one, one inch squares with the seam allowance. So we should have a two and a half inch DL right now. Okay, so let's, let's check it out. This will help me determine if my scant inch is getting better because that was a big challenge. Okay, I think we look pretty dang good, people. Check it. That looks awesome. <laughs> I'm excited because I don't think I've ever sewn anything this accurate before. <laughs> okay, I think that is a dang good looking two and a half inch square. So I'm going to just keep going just how I'm going. <laughs> so, all right, now I'm going to... <laughs> Yay! <laughs> ah, the things we get excited about. But seriously, the sewing a straight line and uh, my scant quarter, that's been a big challenge, this, this whole splendid sampler. So, yay! Oh, you know what? I bet you that, that, uh, that um, starch helped. Yeah, scientific method says yes to starch and twirling seams. Exactly, there we go. That is definitely... Um, that's too positive so far <laughs> to new things, right? All right, so let's keep going. I'm going to sew all the rest of them now. So we'll, we'll see how that goes. All right, let's grab the second one. Turn this back on. Okay, so again, I'm going to do folding the top to the bottom. Yeah, and, and you know, again, I'm using... I didn't really have all that starch that, that you guys said. I didn't have that best... What did you call it again? What was it? Best best press? That's what it was, right? I didn't have any of that. This is all I had. This soak. That it's soak. It's um, flatter is their... Uh, oh, yeah. Best press. Oh, you love flatter. So, okay. You've used this. This is the first time I've used it. Um, and the flatter is their starch, but it's not really starch. It says it's not starch, but, but it has all the things of starch. Like, it makes your... Uh, adds like a sizing to your fabric to make it a little stiffer. So um, this is what I use, and I can definitely feel it. So I think that's helping. So maybe we'll, we'll keep using it. And holy cow, is this so yummy. I, I have the fig uh, for it. And like I said yesterday, I just want to spray it around as room spray. Oh, it's so yummy. I prefer Niagara starch alternative, much cheaper. Oh yeah, if you can find a flatter, it always smells good. Yeah, I'm I'm thinking um, I'm thinking this probably isn't that cheap. I got it at at a trade show a long time ago. Well, not a long, long time ago, but I don't remember what it, what it cost. Go to Bunny Hunters Quilt Bullseye and look at your tips menu for ideas for seam guides and tips. Oh, I, I'll have to do that. So by sizing, I just mean um, 
it adds some sturdiness to it. Kind of when you first buy clothes from the store, sometimes they can feel a little stiffer before you wash it. Wash it is because it has the sizing in still. It's just a spray, I think. Ooh, where, I need my cute little stiletto. Where are you? Here you are. Okay. <laughs> I'm still getting so quiet when I uh, when I sew because I'm trying to keep that that accuracy of sewing straight. So like I was saying, I'm I'm not. That's something I've been trying to get better at this whole uh, splendid sampler because that ain't flying. Yeah, gotta focus. All right, and then top to bottom. Yeah, again, the trick is gonna be keeping all this in order. So I'm doing all of them top to bottom, so when I pull it off of here, I'll know that the left um, is on the left. <laughs> and then I'll know which one's the top and the bottom is kind of what my plan is. So I'm going to do the whole string of them and then snip them, you know, pulling to the left so I know that that's the left. Um, and then I'm, I'll lay them out again before I press them just so I can know that I'm in the right right realm again because this is like where I freak out is uh oh my gosh I laid this whole thing out and what if I'm turning them upside down or wherever I don't feel like I've nested this one very good I feel like I'm moving around too much I like getting right in there with the seams and then and then balancing everything else out my grandkids make fun of me not being able to talk and so oh funny <laughs> You know, I didn't think I ever had a problem with it until I realized, oh, you know, I don't sew very straight. And now that I'm trying to concentrate on my scant quarter inch a little bit better and uh, the sewing straight issue, <laughs> I feel like I can't talk as much. Or I'm just like, I'm sewing a whole lot slower too. Usually I just crank through big blocks. I mean, and I actually don't do a lot of blocks. I just do a lot of easy stuff in a big size and I don't know, play around with that. So all of this is like way, way kind of detailed and precision-y compared to my usual game. I usually like to make it work <laughs> i guess it would be the best best way to say it and just like live with the little fun imperfections i kind of like that in quilts and everything um so this is this is a fun exercise for me for sure i feel like i'm like i said i feel like i'm learning so much with every block it's just kind of crazy I feel like I fall in love with every block when I, as I'm working on it too. I mean, I'm excited to work on all the block, but I feel like the love, like it, it takes, when I'm about halfway through, when the, when the pieces, you start butting up the pieces and they're sewn, then all of a sudden I'm like, oh my God, this is the most beautiful thing I've ever seen. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's, I just fall in love, like in the middle of the process and it's, and every single one, it's happened every single time like it's it's just exciting that's when it clicks exactly <laughs> all right but those together but I really do uh, feel like I'm learning I mean you know if you've been here with me this whole time for the splendid sampler I mean I'm actively I'm actively trying to learn like I'm actively trying things that I haven't tried before like for like this for example I I, I haven't done the, the starch before right um, and the sewing straight, apparently. Uh, but the starch and these twisted seams and all that, I haven't done that before. And so I'm doing it on purpose to learn. So um, that's kind of what this whole Splendor, Splendid Sampler deal is, is for me. This is cruising around, along, kind of. I mean, I'm not being too zippy because I'm trying for my accuracy. What's the verdict on the starch? Oh, Cora, I like it. I, I definitely feel like the fabric's got a little more heft to it. I kind of feel like it's grabbing to each other a little bit more. I mean, I'm sure it's super subtle, but it does, it does feel, it feels like it doesn't want to be as floppy. So that's, that's, that's the verdict, and it smells delicious, the, the flatter by soak that I was using.
less stretch. That's it. Yeah, less stretch. Like I, I feel like it's not stretching on the bias um, so much, and, and the bias. Uh, that's the 45 degree angle of the of the fabric that's going on um, the 45 degrees to the grain to the weave are you using a quarter inch foot with the ridge no I am using like this is probably not the thing to use I you know that's a whole nother world you know what that's something that has to go on my list for the splendid sampler to experiment is presser feet like getting the presser feet right I am using a walking foot <laughs> Because that's what I had on the machine, and um, I like that it the a walking foot moves the bottom along too, I guess, and I like that. So, but no, so <laughs> it has like these little windows in the side of the walking foot, and I'm going kind of right in the middle. I think right in the middle of those has been my scant quarter. <laughs> so, not great, not smart. We need to make a literal list. Oh yeah, so many things to try. That's not a bad idea at all. I love that idea actually um, a ton. Uh, Janelle, I think that's just the best. That would, that is probably what, oh yeah. I mean, I think, I think, yeah, there's better ways than what I'm doing to get this scant quarter, right? And I've drawn it, I've drawn like pencil lines on here. Oh, you have a quarter inch walking foot. Ooh, I'm gonna have to look into that. You're walking, you're using your walking foot as well. I just feel the most confident with the walking foot, I guess. But, you know, that might mean it's time to try something else, I suppose. Uh, I'll have to break out the, my little container that has all the feet in. I don't even know what feet this machine has. Uh, I'll have to check that out. We just have two more here, guys, and then I will trim them and put them back where they belong. There we go. You know what? I'm kind of tempted right now just to spray some more starch so I have that smell here while I'm working. I think I'm going to do it. Um, I have a, it's a Sears Kenmore machine from like 74 or something like that. It's from the 70s um, and it's a Sears Kenmore. My mom got it uh, when she was in college. I love it. <laughs> Good year. <laughs> all right, this is the last little square. And then we'll do all the twisted seams, which will be so fun. I actually do really like those twisted seams. They're just freaking cute is what they are. I use a quarter inch foot, then move my needle so I can get the scan. Yeah, I think that's, I need to give that a try. I, I, I I'll have to break out my feet because I swear I must have I must have a I must have a quarter inch foot. Doesn't that seem like the standard? A scant quarter inch ruler uses old hotel card instead of a guide. I have a scant quarter inch ruler, and that's how I drew my lines on here. I just don't think I did a very good job with it. I'll have to try it again. Alright, I need to find my ender thing. Or leader, but using it as at the end. Now where'd my scissors go, guys? Man, I'm just misplacing everything. Here we go. All right, so we are gonna test my how accurate I did a scant quarter inch again, and how well I did at um, the seam in the middle, the the points. And also, how well I can figure out how to put this back together again. So that's that's challenge number one. Putting it back together. All right, so I'm moving this to the end. This is the first one. So when I open it, this should be the top and that should be the bottom. Okay, that's the plan. I'm going to do it one by one just so I don't freak out. I'm just going to finger press it a little just so it stays kind of open open enough that I can know what's going on. All right, again, top, bottom. If this is crazy when we're done, then I did it wrong. Ooh, let's check seams though as I go. Oh, that's a freaking perfect seam or a point in the middle. Yeah, I did take a pick because I was, I was super nervous. How does this seam look? Ah, oh, awesome. Or the point, not the seam. The seam is still up to for debate. We're gonna press it and then I'll measure all of them. I'll measure all the units. Okay, top, bottom. 
Looking good, people! All right. I usually always have at least one that's kind of off. <laughs> yep, perfection. You know, usually I don't care so much, but you know, I'm trying to learn. So this is definitely, this is an exercise for me, this block, like on, on purpose. All right, I think we're still in the correct order to, yep, I think we're still looking right. Looking good still. All right. Three more. Top, bottom. I have to say everything out loud so I so I know what's going on. This one's top and bottom. Ooh, points are looking good so far. I'm a little worried for the rest of it uh, once we sew these four, the four patches together, but we'll see. You can cut an old credit card or hotel key Oh, and stick that to the thing. Well, that's interesting. I might have to do that. I'm sure I can find um, an old card around. That's kind of interesting because then, then like, you can just slide it up against it. Is that kind of what you're saying? I'm going to try that. I think that might work better for me than the tape. Add to the list. I will do that. You know what? I'm actually going to make a real list, I think. Hold on. <laughs> Let me grab a piece of paper. Okay, got it. <laughs> I am going to make a list. So I, I did want to try. Um, oh gosh, what were you, like I already forgot what we are talking about. It was, um, oh, the credit card. Credit card. Oh, oh she has it on, on her blog. Okay. Um, I'm going to write bunny blog scant quarter. Scant tape to machine. Okay, and then I wanted to try that best press. And then uh, um, the other day we talked about that thing, because my, uh, my embroidery floss might not be color fast. So we talked about that um, color thing, I don't know, a oh, Quiltville, okay. Quiltville Hunter. Will Bonnie Hunter. Color catchers, that's it. Color catchers. I, I went to their site and watched their little um video of it and it looked oops, it looked pretty good. Catchers. Alright, there we go, we got a list going here, people. Is that everything? <laughs> uh, we'll have to um if something comes up, we'll have to spit it out again. I thought we talked about one more thing. Alright, I'm gonna do the little twisty. So now here's where I got to remember, because I'm going to be moving these around and stuff, I got to remember, okay, so the this little square is in the upper left. That's what we got to pay attention to now, which you want. Oh, the machine feet. Yeah, okay, I got to make sure to write that down. That's what it was. See, I can't do anything without a list. My brain doesn't hold anything. Okay, presser feet. Feet. Check them out. Uh, quarter inch, question mark? There we go. <laughs> That's what all my notes look like. Okay, here we go. Let's do this little twisty thing again. Oh, wait. Twisty thing. Okay, there we go. I'm like, why are they both down? It's because I didn't do the uh, pulling apart thing yet. Ah, there we go. So cute. All right, I think we'll press them right away then too. That's easy. That's super easy. I like it. This is fun. And it's so cute. And when you can add an extra little bit of cute to what you're doing here, I mean, nothing wrong with that at all. I think my iron turned off. Oh, this one had some... This one, now it smells like that soak again. It, I must have steamed it a little bit and, and it released that uh, that smell, that fig smell. Yum! Love it. Hopefully your fabric fatigue is gone. These are so pretty. Oh, yeah, you know what? I, I added, um, I had this red with the trees in my in my collection. I was talking the other day on how I was kind of feeling like I was using my fabrics a lot and I and I wasn't sure I was liking 
all of them some more and I was thinking I should add another one. I realized that I had this red with the trees in there and I hadn't used it hardly at all so I thought I'd break that out and yeah I'm totally liking the red. You know I wanted this whole quilt to have a blue feel with just pops of the red and the yellows but I think I'm gonna have a lot more reds and yellows in than than I originally expected and that's okay. Um, it's just gonna be interesting to see because that's not what I was originally thinking but yeah I was getting just a little a little fatigued with just the um just the blues and purples. So yeah, I I'm, I'm, think I'm gonna just totally love this block. All right, let's do this little twisted thing. This is actually really, really fun, this twisted block. I can totally see why it lays flat. And then I, what I extra like about it is because then I get to do my nested seams versus pressing open. I, I'm, I don't know if I've been down with the pressing open thing. I just don't get it yet. I mean, I get the idea of things being less bulky, but I love the nesting of the seams. So I'm, I'm missing that when I press open the, and I keep burning myself with the steam. The quilt speaks when it comes to color choices. Oh, see that? That's interesting. I never thought about it that way before. And I love that stuff. I totally, we were talking about the life-changing magic of tidying up and that's how the author writes about objects in the house that they're like real things that you have to listen to and stuff. And, and I'm totally down with that thought process. I love it. Um, and I never thought about that before. The quilt wants more. The quilt wants more of the red in. Okay, I'm totally, that's what I'm going to think from now on. I love that. That speaks my language. Ugh, so cute, these little guys in here. The quilt wants more red. I should listen to it. I wonder what else it wants. I should listen to it a little bit more, I think. It wanted, um, it wanted some flatter. That's for sure. It smells so nice. I'm sure it's a preference, but I've heard that steam can distort the seam. Oh, well, maybe I'll turn that off. Zoop. See, I need to learn all those things. That's why I'm doing the splendid sampler. Ooh, that's a pretty block. I like that. This one has all four in. Ooh, I wonder if any of the other ones have all four in. This one has all four. This one has all four. So there's a couple. Two, three of them have all four. Well, we'll give it a try. That's what we're doing here. Okay, this is this direction. Yeah, okay. Let's do the little... I love how that just opens up. I still don't know, like, I would think there'd be a hole right there, but I don't know, I guess it's fine. But when I use spray, I don't use steam. Okay. All right, so I turned the steam off, so now it should just be hot. It might have some residual steam, actually. It's gotta get it out of its system. Oh, you don't use steam either? Is that all the time, or just, um just when you use starch. I feel like sometimes when I don't use steam, nothing gets flat. But maybe that's, maybe it's when I, maybe I should just be using the starch and then it'll take care of that. Okay, I gotta keep going the same direction. When I use steam, I press, not iron. I, that's something that I gotta get better at too. I feel like I'm moving, I'm moving the, um, I'm moving the iron way too much when I go. Oops. Hold on. There we go. So I'm just trying to not do it so much and then once I get it kind of pressing down. But yeah, I, I definitely move around too much, I think. I gotta watch that. I'm just, I'm trying to open the seam a little as I go and I, I'm not sure if that's the right thing. If I need moisture, use a damp cloth of spray. Oh, steam starch. Steam starch, same thing, right? Moisture. Um, starch. Starch adds um, some heftiness to the fabric. I don't think that has to do with um, wetness, but I might be wrong. I'm learning. I don't know anything about starch at all. So flat. I'm inspired to try this flag again. Oh, cool. <laughs> yeah, I'm loving it this block. I wanted to play with it. I didn't want to do like a straight checkerboard with the two colors. A dry iron lasts longer and doesn't spit. Oh, that's good to know.
You know, it's funny because I, I have actually been like quilting for over 10 years, but it's been kind of sporadic and, and stuff. So I know, I know stuff. I just haven't put it a ton of it into practice. So it's just kind of funny. So I, I feel like I'm learning. I think I've learned more like just from doing these blocks than, you know, years and years and years of, of quilting. Just because I'm, I'm, I'm actually putting focus into it finally. You're drooling over, oh, I know, I saw her cordless iron too. I'm like, wow, that's fancy. I'm going to have to look into that. But then I have to think, oh, gosh, do I want uh, another iron sitting around? <laughs> I have to come up with a real good reason for that. This all depends if you pre-rush fabric. I've never done that before, and I know some people really like, like that. They do the whole pre-washing of fabric, of all their fabric. Oh, you love your cordless iron? That's awesome. I I want one of those teeny tiny ones, too, that you can bring um, when you travel that are, like, this big. I think that would be kind of awesome to have. All right, was this this way? Yeah, it has to be. Yeah. Okay, there we are. Let's scooch over a little. Oh, right here, I'll just... Sparking joy, exactly. Okay, so I guess I should measure... Let's do the uh, two and a half inch check real quickly. Here, I'm gonna move all these up just a hair. And then we, um, after this, after I check the, the, if they're two and a half inches, cause you know, we're doing, we're playing that game. We're playing the accuracy game. Um, otherwise I would just, normally I would just skip that and be like, who cares, whatever, they're close enough. But I'm, um, I'm seeing what I, if I'm still accurate. And uh, then we so. The, the three in each row together. So that row, that row, and this row. And then we sew the three together. Um, and I think we still do the twisted seams. Do these match up? Oh yeah, so these are still, oh yeah, these seams can still be nested. So we'll still do, we'll do the little twisties on these as well. Yeah, that'll be great. Um, okay, so let's check, let's check our, see if I'm, doing all right with the two and a half inch squares and I think we're looking pretty decent which makes me think that um, I finally got the that scant quarter figured out a little bit better I have a little hanging over on this red but I'm not gonna worry about it I think I can manage that Oops, I'm a little off screen there, guys. Okay. Again, I normally, this is like not really in my DNA to do this, but I'm doing it anyway. All right, I think that's fine. That one looked maybe a tiny, tiny hair small, but only by like a 64th of an inch or less. This one looks good, I think. Man, I think, I mean, this is the most accurate I think I've ever been in quilting, so that's kind of exciting for me. <laughs> yeah, these are all looking great, which um, is new to me. <laughs> Things that are straight and match points and, you know, measure the size that they're supposed to measure. <laughs> Maybe this will be an exact six and a half inch block when we're done. Who knows? Because that hasn't happened yet. <laughs> <laughs> I've been close, but but not quite, not perfect yet. This one looks a hair big, so I must have gone a little too scant on this one. So I think I am going to just trim this one. So Pat on our blog said to redo it, but I'm going to just trim. Let's see double check. Yeah, I'm going to just take that tiny hair off of there. There we go. See, that, that was barely anything even. That's how picky we're getting right now, I guess. <laughs> I don't think I'll do this for all, all the blocks. Well, I'm hoping I'm just getting better, so it'll be more practice for the rest of the blocks. Ooh, see, this one I got a little funny too, it looks like. And the teeny rotary cutter. Oh, yeah, that'd be fun to try. An itsy bitsy rotary cutter. So I do think this one could use a trim. Okay, so I rotated it. 
this one I think I just didn't um, put the seams next to each other enough because it's just this red is over a little. So I'm just guessing my seam allowance for that red underneath is just a little small. But nothing too big. Did I do this one? I don't remember if I did this one. I can get a stitch preference. Oh, I missed that, sorry. Um, you can post again. Uh, I think that looks fine. Okay, let's double check that these are in the right order. Your scant is perfect! So I just gotta remember that. I, I'm going kind of right in the middle maybe even a hair over the middle of my little window in the in the walking foot. I just want to double check that I got the grid going. Yeah, that looks right, right? I think so. I think we're still good. Okay, so let's sew the rows together. And then we'll twist all those seams open. So I'm going to start with the top row. Oh, this is where I got to keep track of things again. So, okay. Actually, this is how we're gonna do it. I'm gonna do these two, then these two, then these two, and then I'll have to cut this one off and then go da 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 da. So, all right, that's the plan. <laughs> so keep me in check so I can get these back in the right order again. All right. <clears throat> all right, so these two, okay, left and right. Put the seams up again. All right, <laughs> you can tell when I'm concentrating, I don't talk anymore. There we go. I think we got those butted up against each other enough. Get the stiletto out to help me. Okay, here we go. So I think what we'll do is we'll sew these three rows together and press them and then we'll probably call it a night and maybe I'll sew the last two seams tomorrow or we'll, we'll check on the time yet uh, but tomorrow we'll I mean we'll for sure be done with this uh, so we'll go back to block um, block 11 which uh, is my little crochet doily block so we got a lot of um, I was going to say we got a lot of crochet to do on that yet, but it's all embroidery. So we got a lot of embroidery to do on that yet. I think we got a good half of the actual doily done, but then there's all the uh, stitching of the loops around the outside and then the embroidery hook. Not embroidery hook, the crochet hook. All right, I'm gonna trim these as I go, just so I can keep them in order. Oh, you're making progress on 11? That's awesome. That's exciting. Okay, so this opens up, yep, like that. So we're gonna just set you there so I remember that you exist. Okay, and then these bottom ones. Butt it up against each other. Oh, 11, you're black. Thanks so much. You have one, one inch of block 11 done. <laughs> Did you cut one, one square? All right, there we go. Or you got one of these blocks done and you're doing more than one? All right. Let's get this one going. All right, I think we're good. I'm really watching that scant quarter now. Oh, you ripped out three times? Oh, no! Uh, why? Just to get the measurements right? Like this, the accuracy thing? All right, snip. I gotta open them so I remember where, where they all go. Yeah, I'm thinking that's right. Oh, the points still look good. Oh, block 11. <laughs> All right, now let's grab this top again. So what did you have to take out three times with, with that one? Just the stitching? Are you practicing, um, practicing embroidery? 
or like the embroidery didn't look right or all right match this is row this is row one newbie oh to quilting or to or i mean to piecing or to embroidery or to both because if you're new to any of those congrats that's super exciting that you're giving it a try that's that's super awesome i love learning new new things in general but new craft things uh i feel like it's you get a new superpower every time you every time you try something all right that looks good our our corners are still looking super good not our corners our, our points okay that's the bottom now the middle again <laughs> i have to say it all out loud all out loud otherwise i won't know what i'm doing <laughs> all right i think i'm going to start using starch on on everything if only because the flatter stuff by soak smells like so good like that's a good enough reason to use it i think that was maybe their plan all along Embroidery is new to me. I've cooled it over oh, 36 years. Oh yeah, did you did you email me today? Or did I like did I email you back um today? I think I remember you telling me that. Um If you guys did email me. Okay, awesome. Yeah, so that that that's like I'm remembering that now that you've been sewing for or quilting for um 36 years. All right, this one looks good. Uh if you're waiting for an email from me, guys, it's coming. And I, I take I take time to really write people back. So I mean, it's um with the block with my blog coming out last Sunday, I've had like a lot of I've had a ton of emails, so I, I'm really trying to work through them because I really pay attention to each one that comes in and I wanna um, you know, talk to you guys for real. So I'm I'm not I'm trying to get through them as quick, quickly as I can, but I'm not rushing things either because I want to I mean you guys are taking the time out to write me and stuff and that's pretty awesome so I want to you know be able to reciprocate so if I haven't emailed you back it's coming and if I get on here sometime and say that I'm done with all the emails and I still haven't written you back then resend it. I don't know. It must have disappeared, but but that hasn't happened yet. It's most likely I, I'm just getting to it yet. And I, I appreciate your patience, too. All right, we're done. Here's our ender. Let's get this guy off of here first so we can lay him in the right spot. You know what? I think we might have, we might have time to just crank this out yet tonight. We just got to do the little flippy seams and Periscope, you hooed me <laughs> the other day. <laughs> you hoo. That's funny. I like that description. That's what my mom says when she's trying to get dad's attention outside. She's just like, you hoo. I'm sure she probably wouldn't like me saying that. I think our points are looking pretty dang freaking awesome still. So let's, um, let's do this. Now we're doing the seams this way the uh the twisted seams i agree thanks also um so this uh this twisted seams is nice because it it's just going where the fabric wants to go like the fabric wants to be this one wants to be folded this way and this one wants to be folded that way so it's it's kind of intuitive so i'll probably do this again for sure and this one doesn't want to separate as easily I might need to seam rip one of those seams out of there. I think I am. Let's grab this guy. Just need to, there we go. Loosen that one up. All right, so we got our twisted seams again. Uh, let's just, let's go ahead and press that right away. Yeah, and we're just repressing the little edges. Are you breaking stitches when I do, when I do that? Yes, so I am. You are pulling out your last little bits. The like I'm pulling out. Let's see if I can get close here. I'm. They were sewn together right here, so I'm actually pulling that out, uh, which is 
pretty easy. So yeah, there used to be a couple stitches right there, and now, now there aren't anymore. Which makes me think, like, makes me wonder why isn't the rest coming out, but people seem to think that that's not going to be a problem. So I don't know. But I am, I am taking out a few stitches. So I wrecked this little spinny guy in the middle here. Okay, just pressing the front again. Okay, so just for fun, let's see if that's six and a half inches wide. Oh, people, I think we're a little big again. Six and a half. Yeah, we're, we're big by like a uh, sixteenth of an inch. Oh, I don't know. I was a little too scant again, I guess. Let's, let's try this one. I hope our... All our little seams match up. That's going to be the trick of the next one is to match to match every single one. That's going to be tough. Better too big than too small. That's that's true. All right, let's undo these ones. Okay, so you can see here I, I'm a little closer. I think I am kind of just letting them go the direction they want to go and then letting that seam open a little bit. Or letting the stitches unstitch themselves, like, is what I meant. Alright, so that's that one. This one, they're going this way. There we go. Yeah, you can see the, the little stitches coming apart. Okay, so then we're going to just press those guys. Look how cute they are, though. Alright. Oops, this one's coming apart on me. Mm, there's still a lot of steam that wants to escape. I think this one's still too attached. Get over there, guy. Alright, let's just give this overall steam. Oh, I'm still here! <laughs> we're still working on this. I think I'm gonna try and, um, you know, we're running kind of late. You know what? Maybe, maybe I'll just save the sewing the seams of it all together for tomorrow, like the final bits, because there's gonna be a lot of, there's gonna be a lot of matching and stuff. I think there is, these don't, oh yeah, do these still match up? Oh, these still all nest, okay. That's gonna make it a whole lot easier, um, cause it's getting kinda late, so I think I might save that for tomorrow. But this is like really fun. I get to nest this entire thing and do these cute little uh, pinwheel things, twisted opening deals. So I'm liking this. Any time when I can nest the seams together is is awesome. Versus pressing open. So I think um, I think we're gonna be able to do the nested seams for this whole project. So that's that's some good planning of this project. I like it. All right. Look how cute they all are in a row there. Yeah, so I think that's what we're going to do. So tomorrow night, we'll finish up this block completely, and that'll go real quickly. And then we'll work on the embroidery for block, another, block 11 again. That's the plan, guys. Cause I think I better, I think I better do the, um, yeah, sweet dreams of perfect stitching. Exactly. I think I'm gonna, I'd, I'd rather like to start, cause there's gonna be a whole pile of matching up seams. I think I'd like to do that with like fresh sewing eyeballs. <laughs> but here we go. This is, let's see, did we lay that out right again? Yeah, we're getting it together, guys. We are almost, it's almost, uh, it's more, the, more closer to a square now. <laughs> Oh, now you can start seeing it, I think. Um, awesome. So yeah, then these little two little bits and we'll be done. Oh, I love it so much. It's so much fun. Oh, I love making these blocks. All right, guys, I'm going to flip you around. <laughs> Thanks again for joining me tonight, guys. That was fun. 
See, I always like holding them up because they're so little. You know, you don't really know how little they are until you can see like a person with it. It's just kind of crazy. Oh, and here's all the, here's the backs looking all so fun with the little pinwheels. Ah, oh, gosh. Okay, so that was completely new to me. Uh, I dig it. I'm going to do that from now on when I do my, um, pressing the, my nested seams. I think that was really, really fun. Definitely flatter. So that's, that's, I think the whole point. And they just look cute. For me, the point is that it looks cute. <laughs> That's always step number one. Does it look cute? <laughs> then functional comes after that, right? All right. Oh, uh, you're not falling behind. There's tons, tons of time yet. I wouldn't worry too much about it, about falling behind. Uh, thanks again, guys, for popping in here tonight. I'll be here again tomorrow at 9.30 p.m. Central. And feel free to uh, watch the Catch replay. It'll be at catch, K-A-T-C-H dot M-E slash penguin and fish. So you'll be able to watch all of these blocks. I kind of categorize them all. in. Um, there's a collections tab when you get there. And uh, in the collections tab, I have a project of just all the splendid sampler blocks. So you can, you can go there. And I also have embroidery lessons on there as well. So if you're having a tough time with some of these embroidered blocks, you can check those out. Uh, that was on Periscope here too a few nights ago. And um, I've done it a couple times before. But that, that might help be helpful for how to transfer your design and how to do the stitches. And, you know, bring your questions too if you pop in here uh thanks again guys i will see you tomorrow night uh good night <laughs>